Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Peters, members of this distinguished committee, good morning, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to testify today. Um, as mentioned, my name is George Salim. I serve as Senior Vice President of Programs at the ADL, and it's an honor to be with you this morning. For decades, ADL has fought against anti-Semitism and bigotry in all forms by exposing extremist groups and individuals who spread hate and incite violence. Today, ADL is the foremost non-governmental authority on domestic terrorism, extremism, hate groups, and hate crimes. I have personally served in several roles in the government's national security apparatus, at the Departments of Justice, Homeland Security, and at the White House on the National Security Council staff. And I'm now at ADL where I oversee these efforts to investigate and expose extremism across the ideological spectrum. In my testimony, I would like to share with you some key data and analysis on the threat of domestic terrorism, as well as identify some significant gaps in current policy and practice that, if closed, could better equip the government to counter this threat. Understanding the threat of domestic terrorism requires us to look at the threat of white supremacy. Three of the five deadliest years of murder by domestic extremists in the period between 1970 and 2018 were in the past five years. Of the 50 murders committed by extremists last year, 78% of those were tied to the threat of white supremacy. In the past decade, 2009 through 2018, the majority of the 427 people killed by domestic extremists were killed by white supremacists. In the last year alone, we have seen mass murder after mass murder targeting Jews, Muslims, Latinx, and other immigrant communities at the hands of white supremacists that were radicalized and lauded online, on the open net. Unfortunately, in the last two years, resources have shifted away from these threats. The limited information provided by this administration makes it difficult to determine the known prevalence of domestic terrorism and what the government is really doing to prevent it. What we do know is that this administration is currently not doing enough. Greater transparency is critical to understanding what the policy challenges are, and just as significantly, accurate reporting on the threats to communities can help lawmakers ensure that FBI, DHS, and other federal agencies are applying investigative resources in line with real threats and not based on identity, political belief, or other categories. At DHS, I served as the Director of the Interagency Countering Violent Extremism Task Force and the Director of the Community Partnerships Office. Both of these offices provided support to state, local, and community groups and provided resources to help prevent and intervene in the process of radicalization to violence. The staffing and funding for these effort efforts has been significantly reduced or completely eliminated in the past three fiscal years. Last week, DHS released its new strategic framework for countering terrorism and targeted violence, which called out the heightened threat environment of domestic terrorism, specifically including the threat from white supremacy. The forthcoming steps of a concrete implementation plan and associated funding request will be the ultimate test as to whether or not this framework will succeed or fail. Looking ahead, ADL's top request is for our nation's leaders to always use and speak out clearly and forcefully and call out anti-Semitism and bigotry in all forms at every opportunity. Beyond that, policy gaps that must be addressed include increased collection and reporting of data on extremism and domestic terrorism by the federal government. As the chairman mentioned, we cannot address what we cannot measure. Resourcing the threat. Federal offices across the executive branch that, that address domestic terrorism should be codified into law and must be provided resources commensurate with the threat today and at a scale that can be impactful. Number three, prioritizing reporting and the enforcement of hate crimes laws, the key precursors to white supremacist terrorism and empowering local communities to be part of that solution nationwide. Number four, supporting civil society, academic institutions, and the private sector to step up and play meaningful roles where the government cannot or should not. And number five, undertaking an examination of whether overseas white supremacist groups meet the foreign terrorist organization designation criteria. In conclusion, white supremacy is a very real and very deadly threat to our homeland. This is an all-hands-on-deck moment to protect our communities. Solutions will require whole-of-government, 
whole of society impact, and ADL stands ready to serve as a constructive partner as this committee and members of this Congress explore these issues. Thank you for your time this morning.